Bye. Bye. Oh, he's not home yet? Well, i tell you what I come down to see about. You remember that last year when uh, Ralph had those three tickets, to, uh, four tickets it was, to the World Series? Yeah. You know, you and him took Trixie and me to the game. We had a good time and everything. Well, I felt that it was just about my time to reciprocate and, uh, and uh, well, uh, do you a good deed. I uh, was just wondering if you'd like to join us Sunday. We're going to Madison Square Garden. Oh, Madison Square Garden. What's playing there now? The Antique Show. Boy, I'm telling you, and I was lucky to get the tickets, too. Just fortunately, there's a friend of mine that, uh, that's a scalper, you know? Those, oh, those tickets are harder to get. They're scarcer than hen's teeth. Dad, <laughs> the antique show? Yeah. Since when did you become so interested in antiques? Oh, I've been interested in antiques quite a while. Sort of a hobby, you know? But uh, I came across it accidentally. I was, uh, well, I'll tell you how it happened. I was in the market for a dog, see? So I was looking in a paper, I seen this ad uh, for sale, genuine four-legged Chippendale. So I sent away from it. And I came back a table. <laughs> so it happened. What do you say? You want to join us Sunday? Well, thanks for the invitation, Ed, but uh, I don't have to go to Madison Square Garden to look at antiques. Oh, I dig you. I dig you, Alice. I know just what you're talking about. Well, look, just don't take this antique business too lightly, because if you've got some real genuine antiques here, they could be worth a fortune. Say, as a matter of fact, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll just look around here. Examine uh, a few of these pieces for your charge and let you know. You maybe you uh, have something here worth uh, a lot of money. Well, go ahead, Ed, if you want to, but I doubt if you'll find anything around here that's worth any money. Why are you... Oh! Wait a minute now. Let's take that ice box. That is a very interesting piece. Look, Ed, uh, while you're looking around, would you excuse me? I got some things to do in the bedroom. Go right ahead. I'll examine the ice box and I'll uh, give you a complete detailed report when I'm through. All right. Yeah. Uh, Alice, I'm not quite sure, but this could be early Ma and Pa Kettle. <laughs> yes, sir. I say, this is very interesting. Yeah? Hey, yeah. Uh, I'm looking underneath the icebox now, Alice. Mm. Ma, I'm looking at the back of the icebox. I'm examining the legs now, Alice. <laughs> dum -de dum dum <laughs> All I hope is when they do my life on Dragnet, they leave my name out to protect the innocent. You put that turkey back, or they'll be doing your life on medic. <laughs> Alice, I'm home. Be right out, Ralph. <laughs> Look at this. Ah, boy, this kills me. Bills, bills, bills. Why doesn't anybody send me a letter or something? <laughs> well, there's a relief. Postcard. Wonder who it's from. Pretty sneaky, the gas company, to send a bill on the back of a postcard. <laughs> Oh, boy, that ain't the worst of it. Now, everybody in the building knows what you're paying for your gas bill. What are you talking about? Mrs. Schwartz, that blabbermouth, she looks at all the postcards and then yakety yak yaks all over the building. You're kidding. I'm not kidding. I know how much your gas bill is. 93 cents. <laughs> That's right. See? Oh, uh, by the way, Ralph, uh, congratulations on that 93-cent gas bill. Uh, Mrs. Schwartz told me that you broke the all-time low gas bill record set by the Collier brothers in 1931. Hi, Ralph. Hi, hon. You sit down, huh? I'll have your dinner on the table right away. All right. Norton, uh, don't you have to go upstairs and have supper? I already ate. Well, aren't you going to be a little uncomfortable sitting here watching Alice and I eat? Oh, thank you, Ralph. You put it that way, huh? I'll be glad to say. Ah, right, now, I'll have a little order of spaghetti and meatballs, light on a marinara, heavy on a shoot, one with a feather in it, hold the meal. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you already ate. Look, let's face it, Ralph. Dizzy Dean warms up in the bullpen before the game, but he still pitches. There's plenty of food, Ralph. Hey. 
Well, here's a little letter. I've been waiting for this from the Bureau of Internal Revenue, the tax department. Oh, yeah, I noticed that when I was bringing the mail up today. Well, why didn't you tell me it was here? I've been waiting for this. Do you know what this is? My tax refund. Hey, 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 how much you getting back, Ralph? Well, the way I figured it out, about $42. And it couldn't have come at a better time. I'm gonna blow this whole thing on two glorious weeks vacation fishing at Fred's Landing. Isn't that gonna be fun, hon? I hope we get that same tent we had last year. <laughs> that ought to be easy. Tell him we want the one with a snake in it. <laughs> Norton, I'm telling you, you should have been with us. You would have died laughing. I thought I was gonna kill myself laughing, watching her run away from that snake. <laughs> How could you see me run? You were way ahead of me. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, Dizzy Dean, and eat your spaghetti. There's a letter here, but no check. Well, what does the letter say, Ralph? Dear Mr. Cramden, please report to Mr. Richard Putter of our office at 10 o'clock on the morning of the 21st. I wonder what he wants to see you about. I don't know. I never got one of these. Well, there's nothing to get upset about, Ralph. Tomorrow's the 21st. You'll find out then. Guess you're right. There's nothing to worry about. No, honey. Come on. Eat your supper. <laughs> Couldn't be anything important. Mm, sure it isn't. What could they want? <laughs> Thing up in your mind. It's probably nothing. Probably nothing. Probably nothing. Look, Alice, if it was nothing, I would have sent me a letter saying, Dear Mr. Crampton, don't come down tomorrow. <laughs> what do you mean, nothing? This isn't the Girl Scouts, you know. They don't want me down there to buy cookies. <laughs> this is the United States government, the Treasury Department. They don't want me down there to shake hands with the Secretary of the Treasury. You got any ketchup, Ralph? Uh, <laughs> what could I have done that's wrong? Listen, Ralph, I don't like to say this, but if you did anything wrong, it's your own fault. What do you mean it's my fault? How can it be my fault if I did something wrong? You shouldn't have made out your own tax, Ralph. I told you to go down to the barber shop and get somebody to do it who knows how. Are you going to start with the I told you so, Alice? Hey, you got any Step. pick a lily or chow chow or something? <laughs> Not what you're gonna start with, the I told you so's. Don't give me any I told you so's now, because they're not gonna help me. Listen, Ralph, probably the only thing you did was deduct something that you shouldn't have. So now you have to pay tax on that deduction. They're just gonna take the money out of your refund. Oh, is that all they're gonna do? They're just gonna take it out of my refund. It so happens, Alice, that I was planning on that refund in its entirety. I need all of the refund, all $42. I can't afford to let any of the 42 go. I gotta go down to Fred's Landing. I need $42. What am I going to do if I haven't got enough money? We'll just have to cut down, Ralph. Tell Fred to give us a cheaper tent with a smaller snake. <laughs> oh. Is any bread, Ralph? Yes. Will you stop with the bread? <laughs> what did I do? What? What's the matter with you? Can't you realize I'm in serious trouble? The government is investigating me. Oh, they're investigating. What are you getting excited about? Be calm. Will you be calm? He's right, Ralph. Don't fly off the handle. That's not get you any place. Well, maybe you're right. Take first things first. Right. Thank you. Now, the first thing was you was getting me some bread. Where is it? Now! <laughs> All right, Alice. Get in the bedroom, Alice. Get in the bedroom, because I'm going to kill him. Ralph? When I finish with you, they'll be picking lily all over Benson. Ralph! Don't, Ralph. What are you, sticking up for him? What, don't you realize how serious this is? They're investigating me. Ralph, being investigated is not the end of the world. You are not the first person who was ever investigated. You're darn right. The jails are full of them. All right. <laughs> Norton, I'm going to count to five. And when I get to five, you better be out that door. Now I'm going to count. I'm not as scared of you. <laughs> if you could count, they wouldn't be investigating your taxes. Get out of here!
19 and 6 are 19, 19 and 2 are 21, 21 and 5 are 26, 23 and 29. Ralph, will you come to bed? 29 and 4 is 33. It is 2 o'clock. 33 and 2 o'clock is a quarter. Alice, <laughs> what are you trying to do to me? What are you trying to do to me? Do you want to see me go to jail? Ralph, you're letting this thing get the best of you. Now, will you stop worrying? Whatever it is you did wrong, Ralph, you'll find out tomorrow. And losing a night's sleep is not going to help the matter any. Oh, I suppose getting a night's sleep is going to fix everything up fine. Sure, I'll go down there tomorrow and they'll say, Mr. Crandon, did you get a good night's sleep? And I'll say, sure. He says, well, that's fine. Let's call off the whole investigation. They're not interested in sleep. Their job is taxes. They're not going to send me to jail for insomnia. They're not going to send you to jail, Ralph. Oh, listen to Chief Justice Alice Cramden. Boy, you know a lot about a lot of things tonight, don't you? You know about taxes, you know about sleep, you know about jail. You ought to go on a $64,000 question. That's what you ought to go on, a $64,000 question. You know what your category is? Everything. Ralph, I'm going to make you a glass of nice warm milk now. Maybe it'll make you drowsy and help you relax, and then you'll be able to go to sleep. You haven't even read the evening paper yet, Ralph. Here. Now, you just sit down and look at the paper and just try and forget about this investigation for a while. All right, sir. That's fine. Just have to relax, that's all. All right. Here's an item. It says that they're building a new highway in Tibet. Oh, really? It's going all the way from Tibet to Mongolia. Says it'll cut five hours out of the trip for everybody that's going there. That's wonderful. What are they wanting down there for? Ralph, will you get a hold of yourself? Hey, don't. What's going on down there? Oh, you're yelling everything and woke me up. Uh, Boy, what? Ralph's still very upset about this tax business. Well, I, I tell you, I'm surprised at you, Ralph, carrying on the way you. So what if they're investigating your taxes? What can they do to you? Can they put you up in front of a firing squad? No, they can't. Can they push you over a cliff? No, they can't. Can they string you up there on the end of a rope? No, I guess they can't. All right, then. Nothing can happen to you. What possibly can happen to you? What are you worried for? He's right, Ralph. Now, come on. Let's go to bed. Thanks, pal. All right, now just go in there and get a good night's sleep. The worst thing they can possibly do to you is send you to the federal pen. <laughs> what are you starting with that stuff? Now look, will you go upstairs? I gotta sit down and figure out what kind of a mistake I made. I gotta have some answers for them tomorrow when I go down there. Highways with the men. Look, uh, maybe I can give you a little hand on this. I majored in arithmetic in vocational school. <laughs> All right, see what you can make of this me, thing. I'll take any kind of help. Let me see the form here. Uh, what is this amount here? One, one oh five three six two two. What amount? One oh five. That's no amount. That's my social security number. <laughs> well, I thought maybe it was your weight. <laughs> now would you tell me why I put my weight down on an income tax report? How should I know? You're the one there and be investigated. Wait a minute. <coughs> Look, maybe I made a mistake on one of these business deductions. Now, you listen, and if you think that I'm entitled to what I deducted, you let me know. Go if ahead. not, let me know that, too. Now, I took off the cost of my cleaning the uniform. Right. My union dues, my driver's license. Right. Now, I took off $80 I spent entertaining Freddie Muller. You know, right. every time there was an opening for traffic manager. Yeah, yeah. That's all. They're all legitimate. I take off the same kind of things on my income tax. Uh, uh, I take off my union dues uh, deductible. I take off when I have my rubber boots vulcanized. I take off when I have my lunchbox waterproof. And uh, I take off 25% off my rent when I use my apartment for business reasons. <laughs> business reasons? 
You work in a sewer. <laughs> what possible business could you conduct? Could you possibly write off in your apartment? I practice in a bathtub. <laughs> you practice in the bathtub and they're investigating my taxes. <laughs> Look, they're probably not interested, uh, 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 don't believe your deductions. What they're looking for is, is items that you didn't put down on a form, mainly unreported income. What do you mean, unreported income? I only work for the bus company. I don't have any other jobs. Well, uh, a little other things that you forget to put down, you know, like, uh, uh, you got a tax book here? Here, this thing. Wait a minute, let me look. So I like somebody say, Come on, what's that? <laughs> 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 Here we are. Here. Examples of income that must be reported. Uh, salaries. Well, we know that's okay. Uh, did you have any income from annuities, rents, mortgages, or chattels? <laughs> chattels. What's a chattel? I don't know. I guess it means did you make any money selling livestock? <laughs> How can you think that I made any money selling livestock? All right, all right. So far, so good. Hmm. Now, here's the next item. Income from interest on loans, bonds, or bank accounts. You have to pay a tax on interest of bank accounts? Oh, sure, of course. You got to pay a tax on everything. It's income. Get your bank book. $75. Income, uh, interest, bank account, $75. That's not the interest, that's the bank account. <laughs> interest comes to about $2.25. $2.25. Now, income from tips, gratuities, or bonuses? We didn't get any bonus this year. The boss gave us all a skinny chicken. <laughs> Well, you uh, got any idea what the skinny chicken was worth? About two dollars, I guess. One skinny chicken. <laughs> two dollars. Now then, uh, next is item income from gambling winnings. You mean to tell me they tax gambling winnings? Sure, it's income, ain't it? Let's see, I've won about twenty-five dollars throughout the year playing pool. $25 shooting pool. <laughs> then I got that first prize over at Salvatore's Pizzeria. Yeah. High score on a pinball machine. They gave me that horse with the stomach in its clock. I mean, the clock in its stomach. That's a... That was worth about $15. Uh, horse with clock and stomach. $15. Well, you see, now, these are the items that they're checking up on you. There's no doubt about that. Then there was that, uh... The five dollars I won at the raccoon picnic, winning a three-legged race. Three-legged race, five dollars. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. What? Remember about six months ago we had the all-night poker game? Yeah. I won eighty-five dollars. Eighty-five dollars? You think they could have found out about that? Boy, that's a large amount of money. Now, that's the kind of an item that they're really investigating you for. Eighty-five dollars. What can they do for me? You know, what can they do to me if I don't put this stuff down on my income tax? I don't know. Maybe it's, maybe it's in a book here someplace. Let me I see the book. Yeah. Here it is. What? Penalty for failing to report income. All persons are required under this title to pay an estimated tax or tax or are required by this title or by regulations made under authority thereof to make a return other than a return required under authority of section 6015 or section 6016 keep any records or supply any information and who willfully fails to pay such estimated tax or tax make such return keep such records or supply such information boy ralph it sounds like you are in trouble trouble i don't even know what i'm talking about <laughs> what am i gonna do norton hey Wait a minute. When you get down there tomorrow, I got the idea. Stand on the 18th Amendment. <laughs> Are you nuts or something? Stand on the 18th Amendment? You mean stand on the 5th Amendment? The 18th Amendment was for prohibition. 
Well, that's just what I mean. Tell him you were drunk when you made out your taxes. <laughs> you know what this means, don't you, Norton? Oh, yeah. You know what it means. Sure. <laughs> you know, I was drunk. Nobody here, do you think? Maybe they forgot about it? They don't forget about nothing. Just uh, let's sit down, try to relax. Be calm, don't be nervous. I want you to know I appreciate you coming down with me. Do you think for one minute that I'd let you come down here by yourself in the state that you're in? Now just try to relax. Be, be, be calm. Don't be nervous. I've been thinking it over. What am I worried about? What have I got to worry about? I'm an American citizen. Got my rights? I'm a taxpayer. <laughs> if you were a taxpayer, you wouldn't be down here right now. <laughs> well, I'm telling you this. If they get anything out of me, it's not going to be out of me that they get it. <laughs> Let him find out. I'm not telling him anything. If he wants to find out anything, let him find it out. I'll be no help to him. Just keep calm and cool. Calm and cool. Mr. Cramden. Hey, there! <laughs> Which one of you men is Mr. Cramden? Coming out, humping out. Uh, he's crammed, but I'm clean. Oh, <laughs> Just step over here, Mr. Cramden. Uh, here we are. Yeah, Ralph Cramden. How about holding on? Uh, Mr. Cramden. What did you say? Uh, no, that's just his way of uh, remaining calm and cool. <laughs> no, it's... Uh, I didn't do it. I didn't do it. I, I know you didn't. I know you didn't do it. That's why we called you down here. Huh? Your signature, Mr. Crandon. You didn't sign your tax form. <laughs> now, all you have to do is to sign it right here, and then you can go. You mean, all I have to do is sign this and... I can go out and go home and there's nothing else? That's all, Mr. Crandon. Oh, baby. <laughs> there you are. Thank you very much, Mr. Crandon. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. I gotta tell you something, Mr. Potter. I didn't put everything down on my income tax. Not because I didn't want to put it down, I just didn't know that I was supposed to put it down. On account of I didn't ever had any of those things that he told me about that I have to put down. I, I wouldn't cheat the government. Cheat the government? Well, I, certainly not, I wouldn't cheat him. I just didn't know about these deductions. You know, for instance, there was the horse with the clock in its stomach. There was a skinny chicken. And it was a three-legged race at the raccoon picnic. I didn't put any of that down. But I want to put it down now, and I want to pay tax on, on all of the horse and the picnic and everything. Well, that's very honest of you, Mr. Crandon. Thank you. Uh, uh, sir, uh, I'd like to make a confession at this time. Uh, a few little items that I didn't put down on, on my income tax form. Uh, during the past fiscal year, I found $3 that was floating by me in a sewer. <laughs> I want to thank both of you gentlemen. Now, you can list your additional uh, income on this form here, mail it in to me, and I'll see if it goes on your record. Oh. Thank you very and much. And I want to thank both of you gentlemen for your honesty. Thank All you. All right. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Just like you'd understand <clears throat> that Ralph Cramden will never be accused of not putting a horse down with a clock in its stomach. <laughs> 